do this. What's up guys? Welcome back to WRX Garage. Uh, we have a cool video for you today. We're just giving our opinions on these cars, the uh, 15 to 17 WRXs, and of course some of these things also apply to the, uh, the 18s, 19s, and now the 20s. Um, specifically, the FA20 engine. So, we're gonna be going over five things we dislike and five things that we like about these cars. Uh, Kyle, do you wanna start us off? Yeah, sure, hold on, I got the list. All right. Now these are just in general. I'm not gonna say, listen, I bought this car and I got it scratch here and I don't like that. We try to do like, just like a general uh, overview of what things like we don't like. Um, so for me, number one for dislike is the radio. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. The radio doesn't put out enough power to the speakers. So if you change the speakers, you're still kind of screwed there. You got to get a new head unit. Um, it is able to change, so that is one good thing. And basically everything that we don't like, we can upgrade and change, which is great. So definitely going to need to do a new head unit in the future. And then probably speakers on top of that, and then probably add a subwoofer. Obviously, you can get it with a kicker upgrade to get the kicker speakers and the kicker subwoofer, but still the head unit is really the main problem. I think I read online it only puts out like 20 watts per speaker, which is yeah. just it's not terrible. enough, you know. So definitely you could go with the, the Subaru brand Harman Kardon, you know, with a kicker speaker upgrade, you could do that. I think it's a little pricey compared to some aftermarket options. If you want to put it into work yourself, I think you can get just as good quality for the audio or even better quality. So and um, there's just it's also slow when you plug in your phone it takes a super long time the yeah touch screen is just a little slow i mean granted it's a twenty-seven thousand dollar car msrp which for everything else that you're getting they're gonna have to cheap out somewhere so i guess i'd rather than cheap out somewhere i could fix an upgrade than somewhere that's like you know oh i can't do anything about that so would you rather add a turbo to a car and have really <laughs> nice amenities yeah or exactly. vice versa, so, so that's that's one thing cool. um all right, number, so you want me to do number two? Or do you want to do number two? I'll do number two. All so, right. suspension on this car, um, we're actually going to say a, a dislike and a like about the suspension on these cars. <laughs> uh, we'll get into the, what we like later. But uh, for me personally, uh, I'm not sure if it's because the last owner I did buy this pre owned, um, the last owner thrashed my suspension, took it on the track, or what have you. It could be because I do have aftermarket wheels and tires. But in general, I'd say that the the stock suspension on these cars is very jarring, um, even on the highway or if I'm rolling on, you know, a smooth road, um, it it feels like sometimes there are bumps that, that aren't even there. Um, I get thrown around the seats, I get tossed around. Um, I'm a pretty thin guy, um, so you know there is a bit of space between me and the bolsters. Um, we'll <laughs> talk about the seats right in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So um, personally, I just I wish the suspension was. A bit more forgiving. Um, it feels and, very stiff in the sense that even like like cracks in the road, you kind of you, know, you yes. definitely feel it. So I think it's an issue more with the actual shocks and the struts rather than the springs. Um, and uh, we'll be addressing that actually in a, our, one of our next videos. I did order some coilovers. If you guys didn't see that preview, one of our previous videos. Um, so yeah, suspension. We'll see if we can improve on that. All right, so we did that. We did that. All right, next. Um, so one thing that I personally hate about this car is the shifter. The slot first gear, you got like an inch <laughs> on either side and you can move it to second gear is the same. It gets slightly less as you, you know, you go all the way to six, but between that and just the, uh, the stock bushing is as soon as you drive 10,000 miles, it just wears out and you can feel it just very, you know, it's just not, it doesn't make you feel like you're secure in each gear, which is you don't want that. Um, good thing is that I already fixed most of the problems with that, but it was an issue when I got it. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a video of us doing everything on it. You can go check that out. We'll, uh, uh, we'll pop that up on the screen here. Or here. Or no, here. it's up here. Okay. I think it's up here. Yeah. We have no idea. Well, what's <laughs> next on the list? Um, next is that one, I think. All right, so we've read about this a lot in forums and we've heard a lot of people complain about this and we're talking about the stock seats. So the, this is the premium model. Kyle has the base model and both of ours come with the, the cloth seats. Um, I'm not quite sure if, if the, the comfort of the stock seats is different in, in the uh, limited the, model or with the leather I seats. The, I think it's the 18 or the 19s. They come with like now the Reparos. Yeah. A little bit better yeah. Reparos. Those might be better. These are just so, the plain Jane um, 
stuck seats. Yeah. So comfort wise, could they be a little more padded? Probably. For me, the biggest issue with these stock seats is the positioning. Um, it's maybe just because there's a certain adjustability that I can't find or just based on my, my frame or you know how I'm built. But essentially, I like to sit in a very upright position, uh, you know, hashtag rally. Um, you know, two hands on the wheel, um, all your, your arms should be bent, you should never be able to extend all the way out. Um, same thing with your legs. Uh, and when I do that and I find myself in a position close enough where I can, you know, have enough throw on the, the clutch uh, with my left foot and I can reach the brake fine and my arms are in that, you know, just under uh, fully extended, um, there's a bit of gap underneath my thighs. And, and so it just feels awkward. I can't find the exact position and maybe because the way I personally sit in it, but um, aftermarket seats, which have more angle to them, you know, they're a bit deeper. Um, I feel like they'll support my legs better, especially if I'm if I'm leaning back a little bit more. And uh, on these stock seats, unfortunately, you can't change the angle really of the the seat, the the actual butt cushion. You can't really change the angle. You can only lift it up and down. So um, we may be fixing that in the near future. So yeah, keep in fun. mind, uh, look out for that future video. We're looking at maybe uh, Corvo Racing or Braum seats, or maybe even Brid. Uh, it's not Bride. Look it up, Dustin Williams. Thank you. Red seats. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I remember you yeah. showed me that. Uh, for me, the seats, I don't like the, I feel like the notches are too far to go like backwards and you're backwards forward. Yeah. Where I'm either too close or I have like, I feel like my clutch is perfect, but then this leg is bent too much. That one inch And then click. if I go back yeah. to click, yeah. it's just like I'm like, I'm reaching here, so it's, you know, whatever. So, um, cool. what was next? What's next? We had one more. Number five. Oh. The worst one by far. Rev hang. Oof. Okay, so this is mostly only an issue that I personally see in between first and second shift and yeah. slightly between second and third. But essentially if you're going fast enough, second and third. If you're going slow in the morning, yeah. you could feel the second and third other than that. For those of you who don't know what rev hang is is essentially is when you're shifting between gears, um, your RPM will will stay at a certain spot for too long. Normally, with a more a lighter uh, flywheel, it'll drop back down to the lower RPM of the higher gear. So you can do really fast shifts. Uh, when you're going from first to second in these cars uh, on the stock tune, you have to go, eh, wait, 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 and then and you let go. Let Otherwise, you go, eh, exactly. Exactly. and you're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Exactly. So hopefully that can be addressed by tunes. We know it yeah. can. Everyone says, you know, even even the OTS uh, cop tunes or the MA performance tunes. Yeah, they said even like just your stock, just this, you know, don't even add any aftermarket yeah. parts. Just grab the axis or throw it on. It's like there's, they call it like stage one or whatever. Yeah, there's even really a stage, they have one. a stage zero. Yeah, like stage, and, and a stage just, one too. Yeah, it just so. takes that away because that's that's the worst part. Cool. In the morning, especially when it's like cold, you're just like, oh, horrible. So. On to what we like about these cars, because obviously we bought these cars for a reason. Um, this was actually the hardest part. This like, is the hardest it, part because there's so many general things, things that we really liked. The but, fine uh, things that we like love, because like generally just, I love the way that it's styled. I love, you know, the way that it looks, everything you could do to it. But to find like five like unique things that these cars have. Um, all right, I'll go first. Um, for me, we just did the oil change. So for me, the oil filter location, that's worth about five grand that I pay <laughs> just for that. I mean, it, the last, uh, I had the 09 WRX and it was, you know, having it underneath the car, like every car is annoying, but just being able to have it up there, oh man, it, just, it makes the oil change so much easier. For sure. It's great. Uh, you wanna go again? Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, number two is the all wheel drive, but yeah. not just, the Subaru all-wheel drive, but also everything that you get with it. For gas mileage, I've been driving in New York now uh, for like three weeks, and I'm averaging 29 miles per gallon, which is pretty good, especially when you're driving you know, pretty fast and having yeah. fun on the highway. But for that, for the all-wheel drive, for what you pay for these cars, especially here in the Northeast, they're, they're just the best. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you road trip this car, um, I've seen a video of a guy doing a hypermiling video on an STI, the old the old EJ25 motor, and he was able to get up to 42 miles per gallon in an STI. And I bet if you hypermile this car, 
and uh, you know, just did one full tank, highway driving only. You could you could get plus you know 45 to almost 50 miles per gallon. Absolutely. Normal driving, personally, I can get around 35 to yeah. the gallon. Uh, highway driving, highway driving, which is just you know, it's almost as good as my my 09 Elantra that I had before this car. So yeah, I mean I'm driving it just from to New York, driving around town, going to the girlfriend's house, racing around. So I'm averaging 29 before. You're right. If I'm on the highway in the morning and I fill it up, I'm like 40. Yeah. Sitting at 40 yeah. for a while until um, I find a hill or you know. the all wheel drive system. <laughs> we do live in the Northeast. As you can see behind us, there's some fall foliage. We're getting into the colder months coming up soon. The best part of the year. Yeah, so. People are going to hate me for it, but I like the winter. So. Um, even with all <laughs> all season tires, which I have in my car, um, I have the General G Max ASO5s, which are an uh, ultra high performance all season tire. You know, Three inches of snow on the highway last winter, I was cruising. With these all-wheel drive systems, if you keep traction control on, Subaru does an amazing job. And you know, you you have to try to get these cars to slide. What they say is if, you're, if your Subaru starts sliding, give it more gas and the car will figure it out. I mean, and yeah. it, that's that's entirely true, so. And in my 09 Rex, I, I had summer tires and I drove it all winter <laughs> long. I never spun out. The only problem with that was if I got it to boost, then I would spin the tires. But other than that, it was great. I mean, I'm actually so excited for winter. Uh, this road, especially. <laughs> Speaking but, of boost, what's number three? Oh, number three. Which one are you doing? I mean, you should do it. Oh, uh, well, turbocharged cars are fun. That's, yeah. that's a bonus number six. I, yeah. guess, I guess that wasn't on our list, but the turbochargers <laughs> on here, I mean, you're over boosting to 22 PSI during the summer. That's crazy for a stock car. Obviously, you know, I mean, with a better tune, you can bump that or you make that more uh, more powerful, but it's so much fun just getting into boost, even in the lower RPM range with these cars, because it does fall off, you know, uh, light to light racing, I guess you could say, or around town, you can get on boost so easily in any gear. Yeah, um, compared to the EJ, I mean, the boost is a little bit higher in the RPM range, but so that's our bonus like for the, uh, for the day. Yeah. But, uh, let's get on to the steering wheel. So this is actually something that Kyle mentioned that I never really realized that I really oh, liked about the car. Love it. But the uh, the steering wheel on these on these uh, WRXs, the, the newer ones, it just feels so good in it's, your hands. It's the, the best stock one I felt. I mean, I when I had my 09 WRX before, I bought this one. I test drove one, and as soon as I test drove it, I was already looking. Is there a way I could get that steering wheel on that? Because if I'm going to keep that car, I want that steering wheel. It's, it, it was that good. Yeah. The, uh, the thumb grooves are perfect. Um, yeah. For those of you who drive on the top of the steering wheel, you know, lean back. I mean, I, do that. <laughs> I guess there's nothing wrong for comfort. But I mean, I mean if you're. That or this or this. Exactly. Are exactly. When you're driving like that, man. Well, here no. is good Three. because, especially when you're, you know, when you're really getting in some twists and turns. Those thumb notches feel amazing. Yeah, and the flat I, bottom when you're taking like the your, flat bottom. When you're doing I thought turns like this. Yeah, you're, the flat bottom is you don't really realize it, but like it's right where you want it to be, and you're holding yeah. it. Oh, it's great. I thought I would hate the flat bottom going coming when I first start started driving this car, but it feels really nice. It gives you more room, uh, so you can get closer to the wheel. It gives you more room uh, to uh, when you put your uh, your legs. Yeah. So if you're you know kicking the clutch really hard and getting in, you never get that like where you rub it. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, what's next? Um, do you want to do the other part of the... Uh... Handling. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, uh, we mentioned earlier that we had one like and dislike about the suspension. I guess uh, it, it has to do with some of the suspension, but also just uh, overall, you know, geometry and mechanical grip and things like that with this car. The handling on these cars from the factory is probably one of the best aspects compared to any other performance vehicle or sporty vehicle you can get from any other car. With the boxer engine, you're already getting a low center of gravity. The handling, even from the factory, around corners, it's, you know, it's, it's very cool. minimal body roll. Obviously, you mean- It begin... doesn't really oversteer or understeer that much. Yeah. Especially like, I've exited highways, like just like, whatever, listening to a good song, exit's coming up, it's making the big loop, and I'm like, let's see it, let's, all right, fifth gear, 60. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> when you take the turn, you're like, this thing is holding this, you know, holding the, you know, the yellow line right in there. It's yeah, it's fantastic. Honestly, if this car came with uh, a heart, like over-the-shoulder harnesses, 
that would be, you know, that would actually be smart because these things around corners hold grip so yep. well that you'll probably need those at some point if you're yeah. really hammering a corner with with with, yeah. uh, with, with decent tires. Oh, I felt so. my, my seatbelt locks up all the yeah. time on back wheels. Yeah. They make those little uh, locking adapters for the stock uh, uh, seatbelt. Seatbelt, that's the word. Yeah, they make these little things that you can clip in. Yay! <laughs> you clip in, uh, it has a lock, and you pull it to a certain uh, length or whatever level of tightness, I guess you could say, and it locks it in place. So you can use that for rally cross if you don't have aftermarket seats or you do, aren't able to install harnesses. So, right, so handling yeah. on this car is just amazing. So. Fantastic. And number five, number last five. one, yep. visibility. Yeah. If you've never sat in one of these cars, or I mean, my girlfriend's got a Nissan Sentra, and that thing just sucks. You're driving it, eight pullers are massive, and you're like, you don't notice it when you get into this car, but between the small little eight pillars and the little clear windows that you get on the side there, you almost feel like you're almost driving a motorcycle in the sense that you can see so yeah. much. Yeah, it, um, it's, it's some fantastic. people, some people like they, they get in a car, seen some car reviews where they say, you know, the fishbowl effect, yeah. and they don't like it. And I think that's just absolutely stupid. I mean, if you have better visibility, that means you have more awareness of cars on the road around you. That yep. means you're going to be a safer driver. And if you're worried about security, get some window tints, yeah. legal ones. Um, I have a tint on the uh, the rear windshield, and, and even that, I mean, I have still amazing visibility even at night. And yeah. so that's a. Uh, I definitely need tints. That's on my uh, for sure. That's on my list to do. For cool. Sure. So. Comment down below, what do you guys like about the WRX? What do you not like about it? Um, keep watching our videos. We really appreciate all of you guys' support. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Should we tell them about the giveaway? We should. Or should we wait? You know what, we'll wait. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll tease them, yeah. All right. For those of you who made it this far in the video, look out in the future for one of our upcoming giveaways. And it's not, like we said in a previous video, it's not just gonna be a sticker or something or a little lanyard or a keychain. It's gonna be something yeah, pretty wanna, big, guys. We wanna, you know, thank you guys. I mean, we're up to like almost over 130. Possibly even uh, Black Friday. So. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit and, that uh, notification bell. Definitely gotta do that. And uh, check out any other, our previous videos and be sure to be on the lookout for the next one. All right. We will That's see good. you guys in the next one.